Hi, I lack self-confidence, and today I'm going to be reviewing this Blu-ray for the film Miller's Crossing by the Coen Brothers. Miller's Crossing, released in 1990, was directed by the Coen Brothers. The film follows Tom Reagan, a drunken gambler who acts as an advisor to mob boss Leo. After a rivaling boss, Johnny Casper requests that Leo kill the brother of Leo's lover, Tom gets caught up in the drama between the two. Tom believes that killing the brother, Bernie, is the only sensible thing to do. However, Leo does not want to, as he wants to remain on good terms with his lover, Verna. Tom ends up playing both sides, though whether this is done out of his own interest or Leo's is uncertain. Miller's Crossing is one of my favorite Coen Brothers films, and I'm very excited to see how this Blu-ray will add to my watching experience. Let's get started. The cover for this edition of the film is quite nice. There are no quotes, no Rotten Tomatoes score, no extraneous nonsense. If you remove the actor's name at the top, it actually wouldn't make for an awful Criterion cover. Though I do prefer the original green poster art, I do like the color scheme, the purple text, overblown background, dark figures, and blue case creates, even if it's not really reflective of how the actual film looks. The back isn't quite as sleek. The isolated black figures from the film look quite awkward. We don't really get a sense of the shape of the ground they are on, and the car just looks like they couldn't be bothered to fix it. The description they have here is fine, though I think it could have been a bit more condensed. The inside of the case is pretty barren. No booklets, no advertisements or anything like that, just the disc. Uh, but it's a good looking disc, basically, just the front cover. For some reason, Fox put their helpline and website on both the back of the case and on the disc, which is a bit confusing to me. It's not egregious or anything, but I mean, who's going to be looking for your URL on a disc? Why would they open up the case and look there when you made it so big on the back? It's a weird little nitpicky thing that most people aren't going to care about except for me, and I'll admit that. Once you pop in the disc, you get all the usual stuff. Fox logo, piracy warning, and then you get the menu. I'm personally not big on the clips they play on this menu. It reveals a bit too much, like the funeral at the end and Leo's apartment fire. I would have been much more partial to it if it was just the title shot of Tom's hat blowing away. The theme of the movie also plays over this menu, which is fine. It's a good theme. I'm just not a big fan of the Irish folk music it's imitating. The way you navigate through the options on this is odd. You click on one of the options, say setup, and another set of items to scroll through comes up. I'd rather it have just took you to another menu instead of just looking at this one montage and hearing this one song over and over while I look for what I want. Also, the chapter select and bookmarks are under an option called search, which I was rather confused by. Before I clicked on it, I thought an actual search bar would show up and I'd use it to search for special features or something. Not really a big issue, just something I thought was funny. Overall, I'd give the presentation of this Blu-ray a 5 out of 10. It's a bit generic, and honestly, some of the things Fox did to the case and disc are a little bit annoying. Uh, it could have just stood to have been a lot more interesting, especially for a film that was, at the time, uh, very unique. As is expected, the transfer for Miller's Crossing is quite good. Uh, this version is 1080p. I don't think there is currently a 4K version. Not that that makes a difference to me. I don't have a 4K television, and also you can't see in 4K anyway. So, I think this is one of the Coen's most stark-looking films, and the transfer helps enhance this experience, letting us more easily see the detailed sets and environments. I'm also quite fond of the woods, as I grew up around them, and I love how they look in this film. I think there might be one moment when the disc skips during the movie, however my brother says he didn't notice it and I haven't confirmed it anywhere else, so I'm just going to trust that I'm hallucinating. Since transfers are one of those things where it's either well done or horrible, uh, I'm not really going to be rating this on a scale of 1 to 10 because it would basically just be if it's good it's a 1, if it's good it's a 10, if it's bad it's a 1, you know, so, but uh, this is a fine transfer. Uh, it's about as good as you could want it to be. The special features on this disc are quite lacking. There are only four bonuses. There's an interview with cinematographer Barry Sonnenfeld, uh, some sound bites from interviews with Gabriel Byrne, Marsha Gay Harden, and John Turturro, uh, still gallery, and some trailers for Miller's Crossing and Raising Arizona. Uh, not even an audio commentary track uh, or a digital download uh, which is weird. The this, this disc was published in 2011, and I'm pretty sure Ultraviolet was around by then. But uh, I guess if you want to watch this movie you already paid for, 
on anything other than your Blu-ray player, you're a criminal. Between all these features, easily the most insightful and interesting is Sonnenfeld's interview. If you're not really interested in the technical side of filmmaking, you may not enjoy it much, but I found all of what he said to be of note. In addition to the comments on his lighting and his preference for 22mm cameras, we also get backstory about his and the Coen's relationship, as well as his experience discovering his strengths in lighting. Probably my favorite bit of the interview, though, is a segment towards the end. Uh, Sonnefeld is telling a couple stories from the set, and he talks about John Turturro and why he enjoyed his performance. He, he described him as this sort of gay, asshole-ish character, and he told how John Turturro came up to Sonnenfeld uh, one day and thanked him for being the cinematographer because he based his cadences on the way that the Coen brothers and Sonnenfeld were talking to each other, which I thought was really funny. Also, he points out how in a certain scene, Albert Finney is an extra in drag, which I thought was really funny and I had never noticed before. The interview sound bites were nice. It was cool to see these actors out of makeup and being themselves. I found the most fascinating to be Hardin's because she just seemed like a total sweetheart, which is in complete contrast to her character. I especially liked a bit where she talked about looking at actresses like Barbara Stanwyck and how they style their eyebrows to emphasize the expressions in their eyes. I also found Burns' dumb haircut and Totoro's thick accent to be surprising. Dialogue is, is written down. Maybe I repeated it a few times. I, add, I improvised a little bit. You know. I'd have liked to have gotten a date or the name of the show these interviews were from because that would have made searching for them to use clips a lot easier because I don't have the technology to record my TV yet. The two trailers were not anything special. I guess some people find it interesting to watch those old trailers, but I don't. I hate all trailers, and the corniness of these older ones especially irritate me. The Raising Arizona trailer is fine, I guess, but the one for Crossing I found especially weird. They do this weird thing where they introduce each character by the previous one saying a line about them, and the narrator explains the character's motivation. The day I back down from a fight, Casper's welcome to the rackets, this town and my place at the table. Casper, can he muscle in? It makes it seem like this gangster thriller, but the movie's theme is playing under it, which doesn't match it at all. It's weird, and I didn't like it. The one thing I did find interesting and appealing was that I learned Crossing opened the 1990 New York Film Festival, which I didn't know. However, that's really like not anything to do with the trailer. So, The still gallery is a still gallery. There are 21 pictures, mostly behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, it's fun to see the Coen brothers and their ugly-ass haircut, but other than that, there's not much to it. I don't want to show too many of the pictures for copyright reasons, but I do want to point out my favorite, which is this one of Joel and Sam Raimi, who has a cameo in the film. Uh, I just like the story behind the Coen brothers and Francis McDormand and Sam Raimi and Holly Hunter being roommates, and I find this picture cool to see. Uh, really not that much to it, though. Probably the biggest downside to all of these special features is the brevity of them. The Sonnenfeld interview doesn't even last 17 minutes, and the total runtime of the snippets is only eight and a half. I just feel like they didn't take full advantage of the space a Blu-ray disc has. It's really disappointing when you can find out more about a movie from the trivia section on IMDb than you can from watching the interviews on a, a Blu-ray disc. Overall, I give the special features on this Blu-ray a 4 out of 10. There's really only one good bonus, and it's less than 20 minutes long. It's very underwhelming, and there could have been so much more. I got this disc at Best Buy for $6, and you can buy it new from Amazon for less than 10 I would say that's very fair pricing, especially if you don't care about special features and you just want to watch your movie in HD. I'm going to give this Blu-ray from Miller's Crossing a B+. It's a decent disc, but one that's lacking in most departments except for the transfer itself. However, the low pricing makes it justified for fans of the film as well as Coen Brothers fans such as myself. Thank you for watching.